certainly have fears that there is a serial killer at loose in Perth. For more than two decades, the mystery of the Claremont serial killings went unanswered. Then, in 2016, a breakthrough. Detectives from the Special Crime Squad have charged a 48-year-old Kudal man with the murders of Jane Rimmer and Kira Glennon. And now, the man accused is facing trial. This is Claremont in trial. Hi, and welcome to this special two-part video series of Claremont in Conversation. My name's Tim Clark, and I'll be here to take you through the details of one of the most expensive, intensive, and extensive murder investigations in Australian history. We're here in Claremont, the epicenter of three horrific crimes. Crimes that the prosecutors say were committed by Bradley Robert Edwards. Mr. Edwards is accused of taking Sarah Spears, Jane Rimmer and Kira Glennon off the streets just behind me and killing them in a 14 month period in 1996 and 1997. While Bradley Edwards denies killing Sarah Spears, Jane Rimmer and Kira Glennon, we do know he has a criminal history. His criminal life began in Huntingdale in the late 80s, but it was in Claremont in 1995 his crimes took a much sinister turn. So it was at this spot at Karakata Cemetery that Bradley Edwards went from a woman grabber and a housebreaker to a rapist. He'd grabbed a young girl off the streets just outside Claremont, a little park called Row Park, steps from the Continental Hotel and steps from where that young woman had also spent a happy evening with friends. That evening turned into a nightmare when Mr. Edwards grabbed her, hooded her, bundled her into his car, and drove her here to one of the furthest corners of Karakata Cemetery, one of the biggest cemeteries in Perth. It was here that he raped this young lady, dumped her in the bushes, and left her for dead. But she wasn't dead. In fact, she was a survivor. And the way she survived was truly extraordinary. She got herself up and made her way down this street, and down there, towards Hollywood Hospital, which is where she was eventually picked up by police. The Hollywood Hospital is less than a kilometer from Karakata Cemetery, but that's how far that young lady had to get to get to safety. And five years earlier, Ironically, this place was also where Bradley Robert Edwards first came to police attention. He was working in the hospital behind me in his job as a telco technician when he grabbed another woman from behind and tried to drag her into a storeroom. He was foiled in that attack. Security grabbed him, police interviewed him, and he admitted that crime. But what he denies is the murders of Sarah Spears, Jane Rimmer, and Kira Glennon. So this is the heart of Claremont. In fact, all roads at Claremont basically meet at this point. All three girls would have walked this area on the nights they were killed. The Continental Hotel is that way. Stirling Highway is that way. And Club Bayview is that way. So to give you an idea of just the tiny geographical location we're talking about, Stirling Highway is just there. That's where Kira was last seen. The Hungry Jacks, where the Burger Boys got their meal that night, that's there. And just behind my shoulder, that's Club Bayview. That's where Sarah Spears spent her last evening alive. Club Bayview was known as the perfect location for those wanting to stay out partying until the early hours of the morning. And on January 26th, 1996, that's exactly what Sarah Spears did. Just after 2 a.m., Sarah decided to go home, but she insisted her friends stay and have a good time, and she left. So after telling her friends she was going home, Sarah would have come down these steps and come this way, heading out towards Stirling Road and Stirling Highway. There's a phone box there, and that's where Sarah called the taxi that she wanted to take her home. Can I have a cab to the corner of Stirling Road and Stirling Highway in Cottesloe? She's believed to have told the operator. 
There's no such place, the operator says. Oh, sorry, I mean in Claremont. I'll wait here. So it was on this corner, the corner of Stirling Road and Stirling Highway, that Sarah came to make a phone call from a phone box for a taxi to take her home. We heard that call in court. It was chilling because those were the last known words that Sarah ever spoke. The taxi didn't pick her up, we know that. Prosecutors say Bradley Robert Edwards did. Murdered her and dumped her somewhere and her body has never been found. Sarah's disappearance sent a shockwave through Claremont and Perth and that was because her family never stopped looking for her. From the morning after she disappeared, they knew that she hadn't just run away. I can't see any reason why she wouldn't be with us if she could be with us. There must be something more to it. Posters were put up all over Claremont. News stories were run every night, but that didn't stop young people in their thousands flocking to Claremont every weekend. Take so much more care getting home and make sure we're going with someone. And place we're going home together. And this is Bayview Terrace. It's leafy, it's sleepy, it's quiet, it's quite well off, as you can see. Down that way is the Continental Hotel, or as it was, it's the Claremont Hotel now. And that was where hundreds would gather Friday, Saturday nights to dance, drink, and basically have a good time. That's what Jane did, and that's what Kira did. It was June the 8th, 1996, that Jane Rimmer had one of those nights a night eerily similar to Sarah's. She spent the evening in between the Continental and Club Bayview. And during the trial, we heard from friends she was with that night who said she was drunk, but she still had her senses. So after a long night in there, Jane ended up here, outside, waiting for a lift home. She'd been offered a lift, actually, by her friends just over there. But she said, no, I'll be fine. I'd like to do it on my own. So she ended up here by this pole, waiting to get home. CCTV all over the area, and it captured her waiting. 30 seconds later, when it cycled around, she was gone. After Jane disappeared, the macro task force was set up. Police were convinced Sarah and Jane's disappearances were linked, and that one person was responsible. That was virtually confirmed nine months later on March the 14th, 1997. Kira had left her work on a Friday night. Her boss drove here eventually to that car park and then their group walked across the road to the Claremont. Kira was only there 20 minutes, not even enough time enough for, for a drink, but it was time enough for someone to spot her and later someone to pick her up. Kira decided to leave. She'd had enough. She walked out of the Continental and headed for Stirling Highway. So it was after midnight and someone looking very much like Kira or her appearance walked up this street here, past the dentist, which is just to our left, and kept on walking all the way up to those traffic lights you can see up there. Now people who did see her that night or saw the woman that looked like Kira that night, were quite surprised to see a young, attractive woman walking on her own after midnight in Claremont, given that Sarah and Jane had already disappeared. Some people had actually even gestured to her and called out to her to ask her what she was doing. But Kira, or who we think was Kira, um, made some gestures um, to say, look, I'll be fine. She kept on walking. And just up there, she's seen leaning into a white car. And that is the last time anyone has seen anyone looking like Kira alive. So this is, or was, the Continental Hotel. Party Central at Claremont, back in the mid 90s. It would have been packed on Fridays, Saturday nights, Sunday afternoons. And it was a Friday and a Saturday that Jane and Kira both spent here. They were with their friends, they were having fun, they were having drinks. But what happened after has haunted Perth for nearly 30 years. Because both of the girls left here, both the girls never made it home, and both the girls were later found 
dead, dumped in bushland north and south of Perth. We stood here on Woolcott Road in Wellard and just behind me there is the spot where Jane Rimmer's body was discovered on August the 3rd, 1996. Jane's body was less than five metres off the road, but it took 55 days for her remains to be discovered. We all probably have seen and remember the vision of the police descending on what was a pretty rural spot back in the day. But that response was because that day was the day that a missing person case turned into the hunt for a serial killer. So this is bush now or rural now, but it was really semi-rural back in the day. There were only a few houses dotted around this landscape. And it was just mostly bush, dense bush, trees, local wildlife. Um, and, and not much else, and certainly a place where if something terrible was going to happen, um, you wouldn't necessarily hear it, uh, and you certainly wouldn't see it. This was not covered, this road, it was mostly gravel, and it was on, this, on that day in August 1996, where the Evans family were taking a, a family drive down this road. And uh, it was one of those pieces of wildlife, a rogue chicken that uh, ran across in front of the car, just about here, um, causing the family to stop. And the kids in the car um, were desperate to go and try and chase that chicken. And, and that's what they did. Mum and dad on the day um, decided, well, while we're here, we might as well take in some of the local scenery. The mum spotted a copse full of arum lilies or death lilies um, and that's where she uh, went to investigate and uh, hopefully pick some flowers and it was just just in this area here where mrs evans uh, the mum um, spotted the lilies um, stopped and walked into um, the bush to uh, pick them um, you can see it's burnt now but back in the day this was dense it was green it was lush and it was covered to a certain extent. And so as she walked into this area here to, uh, to, to pick the flowers, um, what she found actually was Jane's body um, lying face down, uh, not totally covered, but certainly covered enough by bushes that she'd been able to lie here undiscovered for all those days and nights. Um, but Mrs. Evans was absolutely sure of, of what she'd seen and uh, raised the alarm pretty much immediately. Some time before Jane's body was discovered, another discovery was made just, just around here. Um, a, a horse rider, um, a, spotted a watch, a guess silver watch that was completely out of place in such a rural place. Um, and it was so interesting to him that he actually picked it up, put it in his pocket, and took it home. On the day that Jane's body was discovered, or in the days after at least, uh, he realized what he'd found and what he had found was Jane's watch. On the day, the very same day that Jane's body was discovered, another discovery was made just up there beyond that bend in the road. Two other horse riders, two more horse riders, found a brown handled knife that was again completely out of place. They picked it up and they were riding down here when they saw police officers and distraught family members who'd actually found Jane's body. And they realized that that knife could also be a crucial find in the investigation as to who killed Jane Rimmer. So in the days after Jane's body was discovered. The police actually cut a lot of the foliage and uh, vegetation away from this area for two reasons. One, they were obviously looking for clues as to the identity of Jane's killer. But they also thought, well, we better start looking for Sarah Spears in this location as well, because if uh, Jane's killer used this location to dump Jane, then he might also have used the same location to hide Sarah's body. Police 
stayed for several days, but of course they didn't have any luck in locating any sign of Cirrus Beers and her remains have never been found. The Macro Task Force, created after Jane's disappearance, were desperate to find the person who they believe took Cirrus Spears and killed Jane. Then, nine months later, the moment police had dreaded actually happened. A third woman went missing from the streets of Claremont. Kira Glennon disappeared on March the 14th, 1997. So for most of March 1997, fear gripped Perth because no one knew where Kira was. 19 days later, a chap called Jason Atkinson was walking right here in the bushland in Eglinton, about 40 kilometres north of Perth. He was looking for cannabis plants, but what he found was truly horrific. At this spot, Kira Glennon's body had been dumped and left to the elements. The preliminary investigation of the scene reveals the body to be that of a female, and it appears to be that of Kira Glennon. So the road is just behind me, but as you can see, this is still bushland, and it was back in 1997. It was a miracle Kira was found at all, really, because no one would expect to be here so far from the road, so far from civilization, and obviously Kira was so far from her family. Police, the forensic officers were here for days, searching for clues and gathering evidence for a trial they thought might never happen. A cross was placed temporarily at the site. This cross is now permanently here to remind people of where Kira Glennon was left and found in 1997. So here we are at the Perth Court, where currently Bradley Robert Edwards is being tried for the murders of Kira Glennon, Jane Rimmer, and Sarah Spears. It's the final destination in what's been the longest and most expensive murder investigation in Australian history. And this is also the building where Justice Stephen Hall will determine whether Bradley Robert Edwards is the Claremont serial killer.